I'd like to think that was for me, but um, thank you for the beautiful music this morning. Good morning, family. It's so wonderful to see you here on this beautiful Sabbath morning. I'd like to welcome you to church. Welcome to our members. Welcome to any visitors who might be with us today and those that are watching from home. We're just so happy that you are here to worship with us. I would like to invite our visitors to our visitor potluck following this service down in the fellowship hall. If you're not familiar where that is, you just go out into the foyer, turn right, and go all the way to the end until someone is there to give you a plate, a fork, and a napkin so you can get your lunch. Um, so please, visitors, join us for that this afternoon after this church service. I have a couple of announcements, one being that the Kids in Tune has their registration coming up on August 24th at 2.30 here at the church in the youth room. So if you or your children are interested in Kids in Tune, August 24 at 2.30 in the youth room is their registration. Um, also, this evening, um, we are having a collective prayer walk for our two schools here on our campus. We have Madison Campus Elementary, which is our pre-K through 8 school, and then we have Madison Academy, which serves our high school students from grades 9 to 12. If you're interested in joining us for our prayer walk, it'll start at Madison Academy in the chapel starting at 7 o'clock this evening. And we will go from school to school, and you'll have a chance to pray specifically for those students and those teachers and everybody involved in the school system this year. We'd love to invite you to, we would like to, invite you to be there tonight. And lastly, if you are interested in our Guatemala mission trip, um, just a reminder that it is happening November 22nd through December 3rd, and it is $1,600 if you'd like to be a part of that. You may talk to the church office, or you may speak to Pastor Nacho, and they can get you more information on that. Um, I believe that's it. Have a blessed Sabbath. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? All right. Well, let's open our worship service today with Come Thou Found. children's story. We want to invite our children to come up 
And uh, if you would hold out dollars for them to be able to take and put in this uh, treasury bin right here. Now, I will tell you, I almost said I don't have a dollar, so I'm not going to put anything in, but I have $10. I almost wasn't going to give my $10, but I'm going to give my $10. I want to challenge you if you got a 20 or a 5. We have wonderful children's ministry here, and this goes to help support our children's ministry. So please support our children. There's some more over that way. We still have more children coming up. Praise the Lord. They just keep coming. Oh, I see some, some, some dollars out this way. If you want to go get some. Will you go? There's somebody. Oh, somebody got it? Okay, good. No, right there, right there. Yeah, there you go. You got a whole row. Awesome. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I want to tell you a story about when I was uh, five, maybe six. How many five-year-olds? Five? Okay, got five. Five? How about six? Six? Any six-year-olds? I probably was six. I might have been five. I don't know. But I didn't always go to church, and, and we had begun to go to church. And I learned something right off the bat at Sabbath school. I learned that you could talk to God. What is it when you talk to God? What is it called? Does anybody know? What is it called? What is it? We pray, right? Prayer is talking to God. There is power in prayer. And one day we were there, we were um, washing dishes. My mom, I was doing the drying, my mom was doing the washing. And my mom had a rash, and she, she showed the rash to the side of her arm, and it was really long, and it was really red, and she couldn't wash the dishes anymore because of her rash. And it was really hurting her. So guess what I thought we should do? Anybody want to guess? What should we do when we have a problem, a situation? What should we do? Put lotion on it, okay. What else should we do? Talk to Jesus. There you go. We should pray. In any situation, we should pray. And so we stood right there by the sink, and we prayed to the Lord to heal the rash. This really happened. As soon as we were done... We looked at my mother's rash, and right there before my eyes, before our eyes, we saw the rash go away. And my mom could wash the dishes. God answered prayer. And at five years old, maybe I was six, you could never convince me that there isn't a power in prayer. Ben was 19 years old. He was a missionary to Zimbabwe. He went to Seleucid College, and he was working there and helping with the teaching. And him and a few friends, they went on an outing to see a bridge. Now, there had been a rebel fighting that was going on, but they were far from the rebel fighting. But then all of a sudden, some rebels found them. These are rebels with guns. And they came, and they, and they surrounded their vehicle, and they ordered them, all three of them, to get out of the vehicle. And they were scared to death. These guys had guns. And so they got out of the vehicle, 
And they started asking them, where are you from and, and what are you doing? They said, we're teachers, we're missionaries. And they said, we don't believe you. We think you're spies and you need to be executed. And so they drove them out far into the jungle and they made them kneel down on their knees and they put the guns to their heads and they were going to shoot them. Now, what would you do in a situation like that? Huh? You would what? You would pray. That's right. They prayed. Man, they were praying so hard. Dear Lord, please help us. What's going to happen? They're going to shoot us right now. And the, and the soldiers said, you're, you're spies. We're going to shoot you. And they said, no, we go to Seleucy College. And then one of the soldiers said, Seleucy College? Wait a minute. Tell me about Seleucy College. And so they began to tell all the things they knew about Seleucy College. And then that, that soldier, he, he, he got the other soldiers and they got around in a circle and they started talking with each other. And then they came back to them. There they were still kneeling down, waiting for the soldiers to come and execute them. And as they were there, the soldier said, you can go. You're free. We know that you're not spies. That soldier, he had gone to Seleucy College. He was an orphan. And somebody had sponsored for him to go to Seleucy College. And he knew all about Seleucy College. And he knew that they were telling the truth, that they really were missionaries, and they really get to go to the school. God did what? He answered their prayer. God answers prayer. It says in Psalms, call upon me. And I, and I I'm sorry, it says, um, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. We can call upon God when we have problems. What do we need to do when we have problems? We need to what? Show me, show me your folded hands. We should always call upon God in any situation. Let's bow our heads today. Lord Jesus, I ask you to put a special blessing over all these beautiful young children. Teach them, as you taught me, the power of prayer. May they always be prayer warriors. Lord, not only them, but us. Teach us as your people to pray, to lean on you, because you are everything we need. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. You may go back to your seats now. Jesus, 
and because it is your desire to follow him always, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. friends jumped for joy up in the balcony. That was awesome. Um, let's have prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the amazing decision that Molly has made today to follow you all the days of her life. I know that this decision is going to lead her on a journey that will not always be easy, but it will never be lonely. She will always have you with her, and we love you so much for that, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, can I entertain a motion to accept Molly into membership at the Madison Campus Church. How about a second? All in favor, please stand. All right, Molly, this is your church family and we love you. If you'll all be seated for one second, I actually want to ask someone else to stand up, and that is Millie. We have Molly and Millie today. I had the privilege of baptizing Millie on July 6th at Indian Creek Camp, and I wish that you all could have been there. Um, this is a little girl who loves Jesus a lot, and so we baptized her. And so now I would like to entertain a motion to accept her into membership at the Madison Campus Church. Do I have a second? If you're in favor, can you stand again? <laughs> All right, thank you so much, church family. Molly and Millie, we love you. key component of the plan is encouraging members to, su to be systematic in giving a percentage of their income to support the worldwide work of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Will the deacons please come forward? Dear Heavenly Father, Please bless all of the offerings given today and help them to bless the world budget according to your will. In your name we pray, amen. Every battle, through every heartbreak, through every circumstance, I believe that you are my fortress, you are my portion, you are my hiding place, and I believe you are the way, the truth, the life, I believe you are the way, the truth. Through every promise, through every breath I take, I believe that you are provider, you are protector, you are the one I love, I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. The way, the truth, oh, the life, I believe you It's a new horizon. 
and I'm set on you. And you meet me here today with mercies that I knew. All my fears and doubts, they can all come to because they can't stay long. And I believe you are the way, the truth, the life. I believe you are the way, the truth, oh, the life.
how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God and all will see how great how great is our God one more time church family let them hear it how great Dear Jesus, thank you for the Sabbath day. Please be with the request listed on the screen and others who might have silent requests. Help us to learn more about you today and throughout the school year. We love you. Amen. And we cry holy, holy, holy. We cry holy, holy, holy. We cry.
am I going to do? I know he made that decision without thinking about, well, how it will affect me. They have been trying to catch me with anything that they can find. And the only thing that they can find is God's law. I know they're following me. I know they're watching everything that I'm doing, waiting for me to fail. Lord, please lead and guide me, because I don't know what to do. So I'm in my tent waiting for King Saul's next instruction, and all of a sudden, I hear this shouting in the valley between the Philistine camp and our camp. And, it, and I step out of my tent, and it's Goliath, their champion warrior. And he says, send out your best man to fight me. If I die, we will be your slaves. But if you die, you will be ours. At first, it was easy to ignore him. He kept on pestering day after day. He went on for 40 days, every morning and every evening. And with each passing day, his criticism and curses against my God kept on getting worse and worse. And I got fed up. I wasn't going to take it anymore. So I stepped out just a little bit into the valley so he couldn't really see me. And I look out, and Goliath is nine feet tall. And he has a spear that's huge and a, short, and a sword that's huge. And he's really intimidating. So I decided, and I checked with my brain, and I said, uh, you know what, I don't think I'm that offended. I'll just go back to my tent and just stay there where it's safe. <laughs> As I talk to my fellow soldiers, I start hearing rumors about this kid named David. And he wants to take Goliath up on his challenge. And I'm like, is this kid stupid? <laughs> like, from his description, it sounds like he's still going through puberty. He can't take on Goliath. No one can. I also heard that he turned down Saul's armor. I mean, he's going to die out there. Why would he do this? He's risking our lives. If he dies, we're all going to be slaves. I don't want to end up a slave or worse, dead. I see him leaving the camp into the valley. The Philistine army is on the opposite side, waiting to attack when Goliath inevitably wins. And we do the same because, you know, David could win, but it's doubtful. Goliath runs at David, and David runs at Goliath. And David throws a rock from his sling, and I just look away. I don't want to see a little kid die. It's sad. But I really wish that I did. Because if I did, I would see what ama an amazing thing God did that day because I don't even know where to begin to have courage like David. Shh. I think we're all clear. I've been watching pretty closely and no one has seen that I've been here. You're doing great in this little boat. Mom and I made this for a long time for you and Daddy and Aaron painted it with pitch. I bet you like the soft wool in there too. It makes quite a nice pillow. Oh, here's a good spot. Here, I'm going to set you in the water and in the rushes and you will not float away. Now remember, I'll just be over in the bushes eating my lunch. You are not alone and God will care for us. Shh. Wait, what? I think someone is coming. This is terrible. Out of all the days, oh, I think it's the Pharaoh's daughter and the, her maids. Out of all the places to take a bath here, seriously? Oh, Moses, please be quiet. Maybe she'll just bathe quickly and not notice. Wait, oh no. Now what? She has the boat. She's holding Moses. She's smiling and she, he's cooing. This isn't how we planned it. What do I do now? Whatever do I do now? I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm so 
not ready. Been making baskets for 10 years now, and I, I just hope we have what we need. Let's see. I've got uh, seeds and uh, flowers for the monkeys, and I've got uh, spinach here for the turtles, and um, uh, the acacia is up there. Those branches will work for the giraffes, and oh, what's left? Um, I've got grain here for the, for the horses, and hay for the, the goats and the sheep. Hey, ham, we need some more hay up here. Getting pretty close to getting this place stocked and ready. Noah says that he feels like the time is near. I love that man. I'd follow him anywhere. Clearly, been following him for 70 years while we build this monstrosity. It's quite an amazing structure, though, when you think about it. I mean, a house and a barn that can float. Still remember when Noah <laughs> tried to explain that word float to me. Still not sure I get it. Had a lot of criticism and judgment about this, though, but we're convinced it's God's plan, so here we are. How wonderful and actually a bit overwhelming to think that God chose Noah and our family to do this important work. I mean, he, he gave us the dimensions and the instructions to Noah, but then he let us do all the engineering, and it's been quite amazing. I mean, look at the pulleys and the latches and the levers and the weights. I mean, it's pretty amazing in here. And, and man, Lowe's, that first time we tried to learn to fell a tree, we got a little better at it after a while. And, and then we had to learn all the different ways to plane the cypress, and, and then uh, we had to get all the lumber to the same place. And, then all the different ways to apply the pitch. It's been pretty overwhelming. Oh, sure, there were a few squabbles. The brothers get to fighting with each other, and then their wives get involved. That's the real entertainment. <laughs> no surprise there's been some bickering, though. I mean, we're working in pretty tight quarters, and this is a really strange calling. I have a deep desire, though, that this boat be perfect. We have to have a system for uh, handing all the food and distributing it. We have to make sure that there's a place for everything so that when this thing gets a rockin', like everything stays where it's supposed to be. And we have to deal with sanitation and ventilation. The boys put in a couple more vents up there just last year. It's a pretty big deal. And even though I'm not really sure how all this is going to work of this we are convinced. God told us to build it, and here we are. But oh, the work, oh, the responsibility, the promise. I don't even know how to begin. Our Lord, he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His domination will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. That decree and that prayer comes from King Darius and can be found in Daniel 6, verses 26 and 27. And the end of verse 27 says, He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. I find it interesting that the prayer got Daniel, that prayer got Daniel into trouble. But it's through prayer that Daniel gave his troubles to the Lord, and a prayer of need becomes a prayer of witness and ultimately, a prayer of praise. Amen. I can't imagine what it would be like to witness the conflict between David and Goliath. I can make up a story 
about a soldier, an Israelite camp, but to actually have been there would have been some experience. The incredible tension that the whole army must have, must have experienced, the whole idea of betting your well-being on a child is kind of crazy. Lucky for the Israelite army, David wasn't the only one in that valley fighting Goliath that day. God was with him the entire time. I look at my own life and compare it to the soldiers and looking away and things that I would just kind of want to overlook and not pay any attention to. I look at times when I said something stupid in class and the whole class laughed at me. I uh, look at the times when I got a bad grade on a test or somebody that I, that I liked didn't like me back. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a real thing. <laughs> But these are things that teenagers deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I take these things and I carry them with me for the rest of the day. But I need to learn to have courage to not compare myself to anybody else. That's where most of my problems come from. I look at other people and I want to be like them. And since I already have a poor self-image because of comparing myself to other people, I'm anxious about uh, what people think of me. I need to let the courage I see in other people not overwhelm me. I need to let it inspire me. I want to get out of my comfort zone a little bit more this year and experience new things. I want to be able to slay the giants in my life that show themselves in self-image, anxiety, depression, things that a lot of kids in this church, a lot of parents, a lot of adults have experienced in their lifetime. But I know if, I, I, if I'm going to do these great things, it has to start on my knees. Because courage starts on your knees. It is crazy to imagine what Miriam must have been thinking when she pushed the little boat into the Nile and then stood back to watch, then to observe the princess find the boat and steal her brother. I have an older brother, and some days I wish he were stolen. <laughs> Seriously, though, this is one of the many super strange, unimaginable stories in the Bible. Miriam is a young girl in an impossible situation. She has been given an important job to care and watch over her brother. The Bible tells stories of many kids my age facing inconceivable circumstances. Esther addressing the king, David facing Goliath, Joseph serving Potiphar, Samuel listening for a strange voice, and the little boy with the loaves and fishes. Truthfully, my life is not nearly as strange as any of those stories, but if I am being honest, some things in my regular, ordinary life can seem impossible. The test that is too hard, the project I waited too long to start, the friendship that takes some work, and the schedule that I can't seem to balance. Miriam's solution to her bizarre circumstance was simple. Pray first and move boldly. She did not hesitate. We, need, we don't need to hesitate. She did not delay. We need not ever delay. We should never question that first, simple first step. God will provide the peace in the moment and the courage to do it, even the strangest of things. Amen. I'm looking forward to meeting Noah's wife. She must have been an amazing woman and will have a wonderful story to tell. I cannot begin to fathom what it must have been like to first hear that God was sending a flood and then to realize that the awesome responsibility placed on Noah and her family. I wonder how long it took to sink in. A flood? A boat? Wait, what? Who? Us? I imagine that she had duties, just like everyone else, and that she took those roles very seriously, for it was God who commanded that work. And I imagine that they all felt a little inadequate and a little unprepared, but that they took courage in knowing that it was God's command. I also imagine that she had to withstand regular criticism and judgment, not only for her, but for her husband, for her children, their project, their life's work. I know that that can be painful and personal. And I imagine that Noah's wife was overwhelmed by this duty. She probably developed some behaviors that kept her calm, cool, and collected, but underneath 
was an enormous responsibility and it needed to be perfect. The plan, the process, the floating house barn, all of it perfect because she loved those people and it needed to be perfect for people. They were building a refuge, a shelter for the coming chaos. They were building a strategy for protection. They were providing by God's command and design an ark of safety. And I imagine that Noah's wife realized that she was not the Savior, but that she did in fact have a God-ordained responsibility. And I imagine that she rose to that challenge, and I can't wait to ask her. So where did she begin? How do you manage the duties? How do you lead as a peacemaker and organize all the tiny little details in support of the bigger picture? How do you share the journey with your family and follow God boldly? How? Well, Noah and his wife and their three sons and daughters did this and much more through prayer. I cast all my cares upon you. That song is taken from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, where Peter writes, Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares for you. But some of you may not have realized that that verse is also taken from somewhere else. I believe that Peter actually was repeating something that he had read and memorized in the psalm. Psalm 55, verse 22, in fact. And if you have your Bible, you're welcome to turn there with me. Psalms 55, verse 22 says this, Give your burdens to the Lord, and He will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. That's how the New Living Translation translates that verse. But I came across an interesting translation of it from Young's Literal Translation. And Young's Literal puts it this way in Psalm 55, 22. Cast on Jehovah that which he hath given thee, and he doth sustain thee. He doth not suffer forever the moving of the righteous. Did you catch that? There's a little bit of a different twist to that text if you look at it that way. And I think it's supported, actually, when you look at 1 Peter 5, verse 6, it says, So humble yourselves under the mighty power of God, and at the right time he'll lift you up in honor. Psalms 55 said, Cast on God what he has given to you, and he will sustain you. I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels a little bothered sometimes when I feel like God has put more on me than I need to have on me. And sometimes we can feel a little bothered if we think that everything in our life is something that God allowed to come into our life. We say, that's not right. That's not fair. No, Satan brought that into my life. But maybe it changes things just a little bit if we realize that if God allows it into our life, that he's given his believers the opportunity to return it to him. Return to sender. Think about that for a minute. If God allows it in your life, he says, all I need you to do is send it back. Cancer, send it back. Broken marriage, send it back. Relationships, 
that are broken, send it back. Financial problems, send it back. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that that means that God is going to heal your cancer, put your marriage back together, or anything like that. All I'm saying is that he says, take all the worry, the anxiety, the stress, the pain, and send it back to me, and I will sustain you. My last summer at Indian Creek Camp as the director, we had Stephen Brawley, who at that time was the superintendent of education for the Kentucky-Tennessee Conference, come and do the worships for our staff. And he brought this uh, drawing that he had done. And when he brought it, it didn't have any of the coloring there. It was just the drawing of a cross, the outline of a cross, and the words that are printed here that say, have you prayed about it as much as you've talked about it. He challenged us that summer to pray more and talk less. And if we accepted the challenge, we put our thumbprint in the cross. We put our thumbprint, we put our lives in the place that's capable of sustaining our lives, the cross of Jesus Christ. My question to you today as we start a new school year is, have you prayed about it as much as you've talked about it? If you're a student this morning, I don't know what challenges lie ahead of you in this school year, but I'm sure there will be challenges. Maybe it's that subject that no matter what you do, you can't get the grade that you need or want. I don't know very many people who just fly through school without finding one of those classes that is just difficult. And no matter how hard you study, how much time you put into it, you don't get the grade that you wanted. Have you prayed about it? I'm not saying that God's going to give you A's if you pray about it, but I'm saying that if you pray about it, he'll give you what you need. What about the relationship, students? Isn't that something that's in elementary school and high school, and can we be honest, in college and sometimes graduate school? The relationships in school can be difficult, can't they? Man, I remember being in high school. I had the worst acne ever, and I'll never forget sitting in a health class where the teacher was talking about personal hygiene and having a student stare at me and say, well, if people wash their faces, they don't have to worry about acne. And just wanting to crawl underneath my desk and cry because what they don't, didn't realize is I washed my face all the time. I took topical stuff that made my skin peel, and I went through some painful stuff to try to get it to go away. And students, I know that many of you encounter painful relationships in school. Friends that you thought were friends that don't turn out to care about you the way that you want them to or need them to. Have you prayed about it? Have you prayed over those relationships? Have you prayed for your teachers? What about that teacher that you just can't, you don't feel like they like you? Have you prayed for them? Have you prayed for them more than you've talked and complained about them? Students, are you praying over this school year? Are you praying for your teachers? Are you praying for your friendships? Are you praying over the subjects that you're studying? I challenge you students this school year to pray about it more than you talk about it. Families, parents, if there's anything harder than being a student, it's being the parent of a student when they're struggling. When my kids struggle with their grades or their friendships, not that they ever do, but if they did, when they struggle with their friendships, their grades, their relationships, 
that wounds me about as much as anything in life can because it hurts to see my children hurt. I want to figure out how to help, and I want to do what I can. But parents, I'm challenging myself and you to pray about it more than you talk about it. I'm challenging you this year to be praying for your students' teachers. I'm challenging you to pray for your child's fellow students that are in class with them. I'm challenging you to pray, 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 pray some more, and to pray about it more than you talk about it. Teachers, are you praying for every one of your students every day? I want to challenge you this year to pray for your students more than you talk about your students. I want to challenge you with the difficult students to pray for them more than you complain to your colleagues about them. I want to challenge you to pray for the kid that doesn't look like there's any problems in their life. They're sailing through your class with A's. It looks like they've got all the friends in the world. You don't know. That kid might be the one that's struggling the most. You don't know. Pray for them. Pray as, as if their life depended on it because maybe it does. Teachers, pray for your colleagues. Pray for your administration. Administrators, pray for your teachers. Pray for your volunteers. Pray for the people that are helping you. This school year, pray about it more than you talk about it. God wants to do incredible things. God wants to make this a school year like no other. God wants you to talk to Him about it. God wants you to spend time praying about it. And so this morning, as a group of pastors, Pastor Nacho, Pastor Chelsea, Pastor Julie, and myself would like to start things off. We'd like to start off by having a prayer of dedication for our students, for our families, for our staff members. And finally, we want to pray for our two schools. Madison Campus Church is blessed to operate Madison Campus Elementary School and to be a part of Madison Academy. And we want to pray specifically for our schools and ask God's blessing on them as well. A final thing that I'm going to do today that I failed to do during first service, but I think it's really important for us to do during this service is pray for the thousands of Pathfinders who are headed up to Oshkosh this week. Our own Pathfinder Club will be headed up there tomorrow. And we want to ask God's protection on them and also that God will bless them, that they'll really encounter God in a special way on that trip. So Pastor Chelsea, when you pray um, for our students, I'd like you also to add in a special prayer for our Pathfinders as well. So Pastor Chelsea is going to start us off. All right, if you are a student, I'm going to ask you to stand up. You could be elementary school, high school, at our schools, at public school, home school, college, grad school, any type of student possible. Please stand up because I would love to pray for you right now. And if somehow you're in Pathfinders and you're not in school, stand up also because um, I'm going to pray for all of you. All right, that would be weird, but anyway. Uh, let's, uh, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love and um, all of the ways in which you work that we notice and that we don't notice. And the school year is a, a time that is just full of opportunities, opportunities 
to have lots of fun and make memories and opportunities to grow in ways that are comfortable and in ways that are uncomfortable. And I know that for some people, school is so exciting and awesome. And for other people, school is really, really hard. And so I just want to pray a special prayer of blessing on these students because what they are doing, no matter what phase of life that they're in, what kind of a student they are right now, Lord, being a student is a lot of work. And I just want to pray that you would give them perseverance and courage and help them to do everything to do with school to the best of their ability and to your glory and uh, make up the difference when they fall short, Lord. And also, I want to pray a special prayer of blessing upon the Pathfinders. It is an amazing opportunity that they have. Um, they're going to have so much fun, and I'm so excited for them, Lord. Um, but I also want to pray that your angels will just be there in droves and keep them all safe, help everything be to your glory. Thank you that they have this opportunity. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, if you are a teacher or if you work in a school setting uh, that includes administration, if you're interacting to some degree, I want to invite you to please stand. So whether you are, some of you are homeschooling uh, this year, I want you to also stand so our homeschoolers or you work in the ad building, whether in our schools or in public school settings, please stand at this moment. Now what I want is I actually want our students, uh, students that were previously standed, look around spread yourselves out, and what I want you to do is go ahead and lay a hand or two on some of these teachers that are around you. So go ahead, students. Uh, some teachers are behind you. Some of them are in front of you. Uh, maybe it's your mom that's going to be homeschooling you today, so lay hands on them. Uh, so go ahead, take a moment. Um, there's going to be some movement going on. There's some movement. So just spread yourselves out. Put a hand on one of the teachers, one of the staff. Let's bow our heads. Father, here are the, some of the biggest influence in our children's and students' lives that are standing right now, and we want to dedicate them to you. Father, we ask that as the students are putting their hands on them, that you will also place your hand on them, that you will place the Holy Spirit inside of them. Empower our teachers with wisdom, uh, with love and kindness, and uh, Father, help them to be amazing role models as they mold and guide our children uh, into not just education, but into a relationship with you as well. Help them be a good example, give them patience, give them courage, um, and just uh, give them love to lead, to lead well. So guide them, Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. It's been some years now, family. What that word means to me, what that means to you is a big important thing. But the first time I heard Pastor Ken speak was in this church, but it was when their family arrived because he was youth director. But I remember the sermon well. He spoke about the adults mentoring young people engaging in their life. He called on that way back then, and he still calls on that, and we call on that. So I want to go beyond obvious family when I ask family to stand. A piece of research that I do remember, and I forgot most of it when I was in graduate school for social work, was uh, exploring the people who survived well from challenged, difficult, growing up situations. The survivors in adulthood were those who had someone, often not even in their family, that believed in them and helped them hope. It could be the person whose lawn you mowed. It could be your friend's parent. It could be anybody but people who bother to care and encourage and share the love of God to young people are valuable. They've been valuable at various stages of my life, so I guess that's why I remembered the research. 
go beyond research, research because it's research be about relationship. So maybe you heard that sermon, maybe you didn't, and maybe you've already invested in young people, whether it's just Sabbath morning, uh, being curious and interested and involved, encouraging, or in some particular way. Would you like to do that this year as families? Parents? Grandparents, please stand anyone who is uh, encouraging young people in that role. And if you'd like to imagine and pray about doing that as well, whether you're related to the young people in this church family, thank you. Thank you for standing now. Let's open our hearts. Lord, life means we're often casting our cares on you because you have cared so much for us. Oh, what a date of gratitude we owe to share the hope and the help that you've given each of us. May that grow in others. May it grow in our youth because you are growing in our hearts. May our daily walk be surrender and searching and eagerness to give you glory by loving others the way you loved us first. Bless these people standing and those wishing and wondering how to stand, whatever, Lord. May you be displayed in these parents, in these families, in this church family, in big and beautiful and rich and growing ways. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And finally, and finally, I'd like to ask anybody who is involved as a faculty, staff, or student at Madison Academy or Madison Campus Elementary to please stand as we pray a special blessing on the two schools that this church helps operate. So Madison Campus Elementary, Madison Academy, if you're a student, staff, teacher uh, involved, if you volunteer, We'd love to have you stand as well. We want to pray a special blessing on our schools over this school year. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for Madison Academy and for Madison Campus Elementary School. We thank you for over a hundred years of education on the soil that we stand on today. We thank you for the countless lives that have been changed and impacted for your kingdom because of that education. Lord, as we continue that legacy, may we do our best for you. But more importantly, Lord, will you do what you can do through us? Because only you can really change lives. Only you can make a difference. And so today, Lord, we pray a blessing on Madison Academy. Be with each teacher, each student at that school. May they recognize the rich heritage that they have, and may they be um, guided by you to leave a legacy for those who come after. Lord, we pray for Madison Campus Elementary School. We pray for all those wonderful students, and we pray that they would come into contact with you in deep and meaningful ways. We pray for their teachers, that you would bless them, be with their administrators, um, be with everybody that's impacting these kids. Lord, as a Madison Campus family. May we come together recognizing that we all need to learn, we all need to grow, and that together we can make a difference in our world because of you. We pray in your name. Amen.
me. Amen. With us today, don't forget there is a meal for visitors. If you go through these doors, it is for visitors. Um, down at the end of the uh, hallway there, I'd love to have you join us for a lunch there. I want to remind you at 7 o'clock this evening, there will be a prayer walk through Madison Academy, Madison Campus Elementary School. Uh, you would meet in the auditorium at Madison Academy at 7 o'clock if you want to be a part of that, and I hope you will. And finally, I want to say a big thank you to uh, Chris Fuentes and uh, Dave, who uh, designed today's worship service, and also to Patrick, our, one of our student pastors. He and Ethan Jones are our student pastors this year. Uh, they put this service together, and we really appreciate it. Have a happy Sabbath. Uh -huh.